Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you. Whether you are tuning in live with us today from WebEx, from YouTube or Facebook, welcome to today's session, SMB's Digitization for the New Normal. This live webinar is organized by Star Media Group in partnership with Cisco. So how's the new normal of working life like for you? Unless your business falls under the essential services sector, I believe almost all of us are working from home right now. You know, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook said half of its workforce will work remotely for the next decade, for the next 10 years. And Twitter say that, told all their staff that they can work from home permanently. It's like forever. So it seems like the future of work is going to be a hybrid one, indefinitely. Remote working from anywhere, anytime. And it's now more important than ever for all of us to learn how to, how to enable remote working effectively while protecting our business against cyber security threats, which is what today's webinar is all about. So before we begin, there are a few quick housekeeping matters to take note of. First, please be patient if you face any internet connection glitch. Secondly, if you have any question for our speaker, feel free to post it in the Q&A box. Those of you on WebEx, you see right at the bottom, there's a, there's a button with three dots. Yes, you can click the button and leave your questions there. For those on Facebook and YouTube, just post your question at the comment box. Thirdly, at the end of the webinar, there'll be a short survey. It will take you no more than three minutes, I promise. So please help us by letting us know in what ways we can do better to serve you. And most importantly, please engage, learn and enjoy. And lastly, please feel free to comment in the chat box or private messages if you require any assistance or just email us at events at the start.com.my. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our speaker of the session, Asim Jawed. Asim Jawed is the architecture lead for Cisco Small Business in ASEAN. He has over 15 years of experiences as a technology evangelist, evangelist across different geographies in Asia-Pacific, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and USA. In his current role, he leads the SMB practice in Cisco, focusing on helping small and medium businesses like yourself in embedding technology in their business processes to increase profitability and enhance productivity. So before I welcome Asim, remember, ladies and gentlemen, to post any questions that you might have for Asim in the Q&A box, and Asim will be addressing them towards the end of his presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, here you have the speaker of the day, Asim Jawed. Uh, thank you so much for such a kind introduction and I'm looking forward to this session. Just want to make sure that you guys uh, can see my presentation. Just give me a thumbs up if you can. All right. All right. Great. So let me begin by just kicking off uh, that. Uh, my name is Asim. I lead the SMB practice uh, architecture for ASEAN. And I've been doing this role for the last four years. And uh, what I've seen, what we've all seen this year is something that has been unprecedented. And if you would have told me this, uh, uh, let's say a few months ago or, you know, in the beginning of this year that, hey, uh, you know, this is what's going to happen, that we're all going to be facing a pandemic of a lifetime uh, that happens once in 100 years. Uh, I wouldn't have believed you. You wouldn't have. Uh, we, nobody would have believed where we are right now. And today, uh, the new normal, unfortunately, is going to be here for a while. Uh, but I do feel that strongly, uh, like many of you, that we are turning the page. We are getting to, I hope, what is a better future uh, with some therapeutics as well as some more medicines that are available and as we understand this virus better. But one thing is for sure, when this virus came sometime early in this year, we all had to adapt very quickly. And in the beginning, it was all about essential workers. And businesses were scrambling as how do I start working, right? How do we uh, work from home? Uh, what is the technology that's required? Employees were also scrambling. We were trying to teach our kids uh, with remote learning. 
Uh, we always had something going on in the background. And if you have kids, you know what, what I'm talking about. It was, it was a nightmare in the beginning, right? And then things got generally better. Uh, but regardless of, you know, whether you were working from home, something that we all faced and still face today to a certain extent is uncertainty. We all want to know like what the future is going to be when we can go back to work again. I had never thought I would say this, but because I always used to hate traveling economy, but I'm really looking forward to when I can go on a plane and you know just enjoy those camp seats and go to a different country, try a different cuisine. So we've all been coping uh, with this differently. And to give you the scale and the magnitude of this pandemic and how this has impacted our lives, sometime in the beginning of this year, uh, my brother who's a doctor, he's a surgeon, and he's been doing that, he's my elder brother. So he's been doing that for the last, I don't know, God knows 20 years. He's been, um, uh, doing surgeries. And if you know, if you have doctors in your family, you know that doctors, they treat a lot of patients. They see life and death very closely. Uh, it's a part of their profession. And they're generally not very scared. They don't get scared very easily if there's a new pathogen, if there's a new virus out there. But for the first time uh, this year in March, my brother gave me a call and he said, hey, uh, am I going to be okay? Uh, we have an 80-year-old dad. Uh, is he going to be fine? So we were all dealing with this, but like I said, hopefully uh, we're turning the page and things are going to get back to a new normal soon. But one thing is very certain, and I think this picture that I'm going to show you next captures this, uh, this cartoon captures it very, uh, in a very good way, right? in a very funny way. And the thing is that technology has been the secret sauce that has kept our economy going. Imagine if this pandemic had happened during the 1980s. How would we be working? I was having a discussion with my seven-year-old, and if you have kids at home, you know, conversations with your kids are always uh, very interesting. And he was telling me that, hey, Dad, when did you get your first iPhone? I said, I got my first iPhone was like, I don't know, 2012, 2013, I don't remember the year. And he said, why did you get it so late? I said, no, the phone was not invented. You know, it's just uh, that we, we take technology for granted, uh, kids take technology for granted. But when I was born, and I don't want to tell you when because it's going to give you my age, but we got our first physical phone, I think, when I was eight or nine years old. So before that, how people used to work, how did they used to communicate? It was, it was a different world back then. But if you look at what, what has happened with COVID-19, the things that we thought are going to take decades in like work from home is looked at as luxury where businesses used to think that if it's a first world solution for allowing employees to be able to work from home. But this has now become a necessity. And like I said, working from home, uh, it's challenges. I can hear my seven year old in the background. I told him to sleep. Uh, it's way past his sleeping time, but uh, he's not sleeping. And we are all dealing with this, right? So we are all dealing with how we can leverage technology and uh, how we can adapt very quickly. So this is a statement that our CEO said, and I think uh, it resonates a lot with me because he says that companies that are adapting quickly to this new way, this new reality, they are the ones uh, that are actually setting the trend. So think of it this way. Right now, we are in the middle of the pandemic, right? So if I look at how this is impacting us, it is impacting the way we consume. It is impacting the way we work, probably impacting our waste because we are all gaining some weight unless you're going to the gym. Uh, it is also impacting how we shop. And it's not just for us as consumers, it is also for enterprises, for businesses, when they're going out, they're changing the way uh, they buy things. And that's why it becomes important for us as consumers uh, and as customers and as enterprise companies to see how we're gonna be able to work and cope up with these new technology trends. So give you an example. Uh, I went to a mall a couple of weeks ago. Things are thankfully getting a little bit back to normal in Singapore. And, you know, after, so I'm still skeptical on whether I should go indoors or not, but when you go out, people are just normal, right? So it's, and I went and I did my first retail shopping where I bought a couple of shirts after nine months. <laughs> and that's, I think that is the biggest that I've gone without doing any sort of uh, shopping, but I was buying a t-shirt. I was buying sneakers. I was not buying a corporate shirt, you know, a, a button down shirt because right now we're not going to offices in Singapore. So it has impacted us as consumers. It has also impacted businesses who are looking now at collaboration platforms, who are looking at how to grow cloud services. And one aspect which is going to be the theme of this presentation as we move forward is how are the businesses looking at 
cybersecurity threats. Uh, it is something that once you open your network, when you allow your users to be able to work from home, these users need to be able to actually go back and be able to make sure that their employees are safe. Hopefully we're gonna address those challenges. But shifting gears, what I essentially want you to take away from this is that today we are living in this pandemic world where 98% of the business is happening from home, right? So we all are working from home today. Or maybe slightly the essential workers are going back to offices. We can go back to our office as well if we take a permission. But hopefully sometime soon when we kick into phase three, we should be able to go back to our offices as well. But we also need to start looking at how can we start better preparing for tomorrow? Because when we start going back to our offices sometime next year, sometime in the beginning, hopefully of next year, that office has to change. That office needs to allow you to be able to share spaces, yet being socially distant, to be able to allow your employees still to be able to work from home and to be able to still join this one meeting, this one environment. So I think this is the time for us, uh, for our businesses to actually go back and see how we can start investing in the network of the future. Technologies like 5G making the rounds. I think if you've been following the news, the new iPhone that's out is got 5G radios. Well, have you heard about Wi-Fi 6? Have you thought about upgrading your network to the network of the future so that once you return to your locations, once you return to your offices, you are able to give your employees that next generation meeting, collaboration, and network experience. So before we dig into what are some of the outcomes and the use cases, uh, that we are offering to our, our customers as Cisco. I want to just double click on what Cisco is doing under the umbrella of Cisco Design. And what is Cisco all about? So this is a question that I know we, we have a very varied audience today. So there's a question, I, I think many of you are aware of Cisco, but you know, there's a question my son always asks me that, what do you do, right? And are you the boss? <laughs> and I tell him I'm not the boss, I hope I am, but uh, he always asks me, are you the host of this conference? Can you mute people? And he's uh, obsessed with being able to mute. And he says that, can I tell people, can I control who I mute? And I say, it doesn't work like that. But having said that, the question that people ask you is, what does Cisco fundamentally do? And for those of you who've been with Cisco for a while, who've seen Cisco before, you know that if, if you think of internet as the, as the information highway, we are the people that's laying the infrastructure or the groundwork for this highway for your internet packets to travel. That's essentially what we do. We connect different networks together. But that's how Cisco started. It was synonym with routing and switching. Uh, we built multi-billion dollar enterprise based on routing and switching. But Cisco has added so many more things in the last couple of decades where we are now building data centers. We have a cloud story. We are one of the leading vendors when it comes to collaboration and allowing you to be able to work from home and do so securely because when you have these packets this ip information on the highway you also want to make sure that there are no accidents that are happening in the highway so security plays a key role in making sure that we can keep our customers their data and their intellectual property uh, safe but fundamentally historically uh, cisco has been a very enterprise service provider driven organization so we've been focused at the top tier of customers providing them solutions and outcomes uh, that they require and customizing a lot of the solutions that we sell. But if you look at small and medium businesses, which is the target audience of the session today, Cisco historically has been, okay, we have great solutions, we have great products, great business outcomes, but for a small and medium business with less, less than 50 users or less than 100 users, or maybe 10 or 20 users, does Cisco have a solution? Does Cisco have a price point? And does Cisco have a story where they can go and sell these different technologies so that small and medium businesses can also start experiencing some of the technology that we're selling? And the answer is yes, uh, with a new brand, uh, which is called Cisco Design. And under this brand, what we have done is that we have brought in curated, purpose, and in some cases, purpose-built portfolio products and services for small and medium businesses. So the idea is that whether it's Connect, which is your network connectivity, whether it's compute, which is your private cloud, or maybe even a hybrid cloud, whether it's collaborate, which is your conferencing, video, contact centers, handsets, headsets, and whether it's security, you have solutions for every price point for every customer. And the mantra being that has to be simple, 
it has to be secure, it has to be safe. So we want to make sure that a lot of this configuration is automated and these products can deliver the outcomes for small and medium businesses without having a large IT team. So what does that mean now in terms of in today's new normal? And this is what this session is all about. What are the problems that we're trying to solve? And the answer is that everybody wants to be able to work from home. Forget about technology for a second. Forget about Cisco for a second. As a regular employee, as a regular uh, a business owner, it is very important for us to have a way for allowing our employees to be able to work from home. All of us are facing this. And during the beginning of the pandemic, where well, we were all scrambling to see how we can actually get our employees back to work, we downloaded the first available freeware of the internet to get our conferencing systems up and running. But that also opened a big gap when it comes to cybercrime protection, right? So there are, at any given moment, uh, during a day, 4,000 attacks. And 60% of those odd attacks are targeted especially for small and medium businesses. I guarantee you right now, that if you were to download a malware protection tool off of the internet and just run a scan on your PC, laptop, or Mac, you would see that you have tons of uh, ransomwares. Uh, you have malwares on your PC. You have cookies, tracking cookies that are taking your data away. It doesn't impact us because you know we don't see a message that hey your photos have been hacked. Pay me some money. But sometimes these attacks can take a couple of years, and then you see all the credit card information is online, all your account passwords are online, and then you know it could be your family photos. It could be so it doesn't have to be an enterprise even at a consumer level. Cyber crime protection is something that's very important. And then I think the second part of this is how do we now get ready for the phase three? Once these offices open, we're going to go back to these offices. So inside these offices, how do we make sure that we are able to monitor the workplace? We are able to monitor the network. And we are truly able to build an office of the future where you can go have shared workspaces, but still practice social distancing. So how do we go about and do that? So in terms of products, it means a lot. I know that some of these products, for those who are not from a Cisco background, would not make a lot of sense. But hopefully in this presentation, what we're going to try to do is break down some of these products that you see on the screen. But if you are interested in some of these solutions, if you want to look for how we can work from home, if you want to look at you know, what are some of the security solutions that you should be aware of, and then maybe perhaps even purchase or have your companies purchase it on your behalf, then we can get you in touch with Cisco partners, or you can reach out to us directly. We can get you the right set of hands. But what is important is that if you feel these use cases are relevant for you, then please reach out to us and we can dig into each of these products with you individually and explain it to you what are some of the outcomes that these products help you deliver. So now let's just double click and talk about some of these use cases in a lot of details. And I think I talked about this before, right? All of us uh, today, in some form or the other, are working from home. What does work from home mean? For some of us, it just means having a cell phone. For some of you, it may mean working on an office application at home and sending out an email. Uh, it requires internet connectivity. It also means <laughs> teaching kids and having all that chaos happening around you and still be able to go out, have those purpose-built collaboration tools so that you can have still that immersive experience even though you're not inside your office. So how hard is it, right? So we all say we want to work from home. We all have bits and pieces that we've downloaded, got from somewhere, using our cell phones, trying to get the job done. But what is very important is that A, you don't have to be a technology expert to do it. B, you need to have a strategy. Because right now is the time when your free trials are expiring, when we prepare for going out back to our offices. We need to make sure that we have, we are ready, we are prepared, we know what we're doing, right? what are the caveats, what are some of the things that we need to do. But well, one thing that is very important is that we live in a world of instant gratification. I download an app on my mobile phone. I want that app to work. So that way, simply from a business outcome standpoint, a lot of the solutions that we're going to be talking about today, they are cloud delivered. And what I mean by cloud delivered is that you can order a product right now, have it up and running in a matter of seconds. You can download the Cisco WebEx app. You can download the Cisco Duo app. You can download the Cisco Umbrella app from the app store, and then we can start using these products instantaneously and have that instant gratification that we all want, right? We, nobody can wait now a couple of days after ordering something. Even when you have Prime shipping or when you have Lazada shipping, 
uh, three days or four days feels like a long time. That excitement of getting something new is something that uh, we're all used to. But in terms of the building blocks from a technology standpoint, uh, these are the building blocks. We need to make sure that we have a collaboration solution. That collaboration solution could be as simple as your laptop with a webcam and an application, right? Of your employees, let's say your CFO, your CEO, uh, your uh, managers, that you want to have a better experience. So you can give them a purpose built video endpoint to take their work from home experience to a completely different level. The second part is, of course, the network. How do you allow these users now to connect to the network? And can I just connect to the public internet? Yes, technically you can, but your data is not safe on the public internet. A is not encrypted. B, you're making yourself available for phishing attacks or man in the middle attacks, and you have no network monitoring. You have no quality of service. So imagine again, going back to the highway example, where all the data is just cars going on the highway. If you have no quality of service, you can have traffic jams everywhere, right? And nobody likes that feeling. So we want to make sure that our network is up and running. There is a quality of service. Right now, I am talking to you. But what if my video becomes very choppy? What if the quality of my call just drops suddenly? Then that is going to impact this whole experience. And we are spending so much of your valuable time with us. You're sharing your time with us. So we want to make sure that the tools that we're using, the network that we're using, is future proof and is ready and up to the task. And the final part being on the right hand side is how do you make sure that all this experience that we're talking about that we all take for granted is also secure and security is a hidden thing right it's like uh, i take my son out for you know i teach him how to learn a bike i teach him how to learn to do skating you know he wears these uh, knee guards and elbow guards sometimes he falls and then they're useful but sometimes he doesn't fall so you know do we still give him a helmet or we don't do we still wear our seatbelts or we don't? We do, right? Because it's not about like, hey, I'm okay. As, you know, I've been working for the last three months because you never know when that big attack is going to come. So security is something that you just have to not take for granted. It's invisible to you in many ways because these hackers are very smart. So we want to make sure that any experience that you're getting from your work from home solution is secure and you are able to drive business outcomes. So what are the three things that we want to drive with this? It has to be simple, it has to be smart, and you can deploy it anywhere on a single plane of glass. It has to be securely managed, whether it's from cloud or on-prem. And most of the small and medium businesses, they actually want cloud delivered security as well. So I want, again, going back to the theme of instant gratification, I want to be my network to be sim simple, secure, and safe in a matter of a few simple clicks. So there's this whole initiative in Cisco how do we make sure that our devices become plug and play? And how do we get things like zero touch provisioning where you essentially ship a box and all you have to do is power it on, connect it to the internet, and you've got your products uh, up and running with the configuration downloaded from the data center. So let's talk about collaboration. It's the number one product that comes to mind uh, when we talk about working from home. And this is very interesting. So. Chuck Robbins is uh, our CEO, and he said something that is very powerful. Uh, these are not just words, but he said something that uh, made a lot of impact on me. And he said, privacy is a fundamental human right. And we need to make sure that whatever customer data we have is secure and transparent. It's non-negotiable. And this is not just these are powerful words. I think they also highlight his intent. And the intent is that we have three principles. Committed to the privacy of your data. So we don't share your data, IP information, to Facebook, to any other websites out there. We want to make sure that by design, the products that we sell are secure by default. And we are transparent for security. So if there's any patch that's coming. So we have the world's largest security team with Cisco Talos. I think it's around 250 employees that are constantly monitoring and looking at the telemetry of the data that is coming from network devices all over the world. And we have millions of devices over the world giving all this telemetry information real time. So if there is an attack in any part of the world, within hours, we will have a response and push it out to all Cisco devices across the world. So that's the power of Cisco security. And why are we talking about security when we're talking about collaboration and work from home? Because 
anybody can do video conferencing because they do video conferencing first and then they bring in third party solutions to do security we do security first we do sec we do video conferencing with security as a top of mind imagine you know your kids are going on a call where they're doing remote learning and in that remote learning somebody shares something obscene so that's our commitment how do we make it secure easy to use and flexible so for those of you not aware cisco webex is the number one web conferencing platform in the world period so not only do you have ease of use strong security and privacy of video first experience you also have new technologies like ai assistant live meeting transcript to be able to record your meetings to be able to share a content across devices and do that in full hd across devices right so it's truly whether you're on your mobile whether you're on your mac whether you're on your windows laptop you're able to have that same experience uh, that you don't have anywhere else on any other device so it's very native it's very intuitive uh it's something like a uh, way uh you know you just in a simple click your setup and then one click and you're able to join your meeting but it doesn't end there because we also have the world's best webex teams platform that allows you to take your webex meeting experience to a different level now once your meeting is over or even before your meeting you're able to use this messaging platform to be able to share meeting notes, to be able to share applications, to, to be able to share, uh, let's say an Excel file or a Word document or a PowerPoint file. So you have this integrated WebEx calling, meeting and video experience that no other vendor can do. And again, going back to the whole persona based uh, solution when it comes to working from home, we wanna make sure that the video experience that you're having is immersive, right? So whether you're just using your laptop uh, but there are other video endpoints as well that we sell that allow you to take your meeting experience to a completely different level by having a full high definition video conferencing solution in mind. And going back to my original story, which was that it's not just about where we are today, where maybe just having a laptop at home and having an internet connectivity is enough to get by. We have to quickly shift gears as we move into phase three and hopefully go back to offices. We are not gonna be comfortable on the very first day to be able to go back to the same old ways while we're all desperately trying to be there, we still have to practice some safe social distancing. So having things like a virtual kiosk where you're, where you're able to interact with somebody, but you don't have to do it physically. Or whether it's, let's say there are 10 people in the office, but 30 people are still joining from home. How do we still get them on, on the same meeting? And I think that is what makes Cisco unique, that we are not only the best vendor when it comes to web conferencing, we have a great Teams application, a messaging application. We have a great contact center solution. We have a choice of video endpoints. So when you look at collaboration, it's not just about, okay, I'm gonna get web conferencing, then I'm gonna get security, then I'm gonna patch on some video endpoints from a different vendor, and then I'm gonna bring something else. It's about having one single holistic approach and end-to-end -end immersive experience because end of the day, collaboration is about experience, and it is about keeping things as simple as they can. Not many of you would know this, but if you are coming from a legacy video background, to do a video call is not a simple process. If we were having this discussion, let's say five years ago, it used to take a complete IT team to set up a video call. And today my son, who's a seven year old, can do a video call on his own. So technology has come a long way and we expect technology to go further because it's also not just about, we cannot sit on our laurels and say, that, hey, we are the best in everything. It's also about constantly reinventing, bringing in new products to the market and addressing some of the challenges that our customers are facing. But I think, again, going back to the message, don't skimp on security. It's important that we address that when you allow your employees to work from home, it's a great opportunity for hackers too. It's not just having your employees back connected to the internet. It's also about hackers who are leveraging the fact that, oh, wow, this is great. You know, you have people who are now connecting from home. So as if I put myself in the shoes of a hacker, if you were working from your office, it's very difficult for me to be able to hack into the network. You have your firewall, you have your IPS, you have your endpoint protection, you have your switches that come with inbuilt protection and uh, capabilities of security as well. Once I'm able to do all that and get to your laptop, then I'm able to potentially hack and uh, you know see the malware. Uh, 
it's done, uh, but it's not as easy as you're on a public internet connection, maybe on a Starbucks, maybe inside your house, and you're connected over Wi-Fi WPA2 encryption, which is very easy to crack in certain cases, depending on which version you're using. And boom, I'm inside your network. I can see the malware. You don't even have a firewall or you don't have an antivirus running on your laptop. So regardless, for hackers, the opportunity is as well. And the amount of attacks has just gone up. So no matter what you're looking at, millions of workers are now exposed to attacks. And uh, this is something that's very concerning and we need to address this. So what it means in terms of numbers, right? Let's look at some of these numbers. 4,000 daily attacks and 43% of these attacks are actually targeting small businesses and 62% are reporting breaches. And what is very important is that some of these attacks you not even know are happening for a couple of years. So all your credit card information, all your customer IP is all out on the internet without you knowing. We've also heard about ransomware, right? So somebody would come, they would log into your phone, you open a website, and now you cannot go back to your home screen. Your phone is logged on a particular page, all your photos are gone, and then the hacker will send you an email that pay me potentially hundreds or thousands of dollars, and you can get your phone back or you can get your laptop back. So it is important that no matter what and where we are accessing our internet from, the access has to be secure. Now, how do we do that? So from a solution standpoint, I think it's pretty simple. We need to make sure that we build it into two pieces. There's a solution of connectivity, which may require some physical devices. So whether it's your VPN connectivity, whether it's your network connectivity using Meraki or using Cisco Catalyst platform. The second part being security. Okay, some of it is cloud delivered. So uh, you have Cisco Umbrella, uh, which we're gonna double click on. You have Cisco AMP endpoints and you have Cisco Duo. So essentially what we're trying to do is that as a remote worker, I just don't open my laptop, log in with a simple password, and then just access all my information, all my office information over the internet. That's not the solution that we recommend. Uh, if you're doing this, uh, know this fully well. This is like driving on a highway at 200 miles per hour without a seatbelt. And this is not something that we would advise. So do take a look at your security strategy. Again, if you want a scenario where you want one and one is to one consultation, be in touch with our partners, be in touch with somebody from Cisco, reach out to us, we can help you connect with these people. But it is essential that we have a secure remote worker solution in place. So what does it look like? Well, it has many components and most of them, thankfully, are cloud delivered. Again, going back to the original point that we live in a world of instant gratification. And if I want to buy something, I want to have it implemented very quickly. So with Cisco Umbrella, we have essentially a cloud-based internet firewall or an internet gateway that makes sure that all your information is going to the secure server, right? So let's say you go to your citibank.com and I'm the man in the middle, I'm the hacker, and I spoof because essentially you're writing citibank.com and I fake a website to act like their citibank.com. And then you go ahead and you enter all your username and password and I monitor all your keystrokes and boom, I'm in, I have your username, I have your password, and now I can log into your bank. So there are man in the middle of attacks, there are phishing attacks, there's malware that can be seeded. So essentially what we're doing is that using DNS, which is the engine that powers this, we are able to ensure that the website that you're accessing is actually authentic. And then we're able to do advanced things like uh, push policy, what URLs you can access, you cannot access, making sure that we have some line of defense. This is your first line of defense when it comes to roaming, branch, or headquarters. So what is the second line of defense? Well. What's, what about endpoints? What about an endpoint on your Android phone, on your Mac, on your Linux, on your Windows? How do you make sure that those things are safe? Well, we have something called this advanced malware protection endpoint, cloud-based solution again, which allows you to put a firewall, intrusion prevention system, and an advanced malware protection, everything built onto an endpoint that is installed as an application onto your endpoint. And then you're safe because essentially what we're doing is we are real-time monitoring all the files that you're accessing. If there's a file that has potentially got a malware, we are able to sandbox it. We are able to see if it's a new malware. We are able to run some tests, but we are able to make sure that you're not getting something in your email. You're not getting something that can compromise 
uh, the identity of your endpoint. And the last point uh, from a cloud security perspective is authentication. So authentication is something that's required almost everywhere. And essentially, you know, you have three types of authentications. Uh, you know, when you log into your computer, you enter a simple password. That's a single factor authentication. Uh, if you are logging onto a bank, they may give you a physical dongle where you have to two-factor authentication because first you enter a password. Two -factor, two -factor. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think that we just got a, somebody speaking something, but if there's a question, uh, let me know. Uh, but the second factor, two-factor authentication is essentially where you have a dongle, where you generate some passwords, write your physical password, so you have two passwords to get into your bank account. That's two-factor authentication. With Duo, we are doing something called as multi-factor authentication. So earlier it used to be trust but verify, but with Duo we say never trust, always verify. So we want to make sure that we have a solution that integrates with all your apps. You can self-enroll in a matter of minutes. Again, going back to simplicity, security, automation, and user can authenticate themselves in seconds using multiple challenges. So depending on the device you're logging in from, the location you're logging in from, the IP address, if that has changed, if the laptop is new, Duo is able to make sure that they are able to use multiple authentication methods to verify the identity of the user is the one that he's claiming to be. Hi, Asif. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, um, there's a question from uh, one of the attendee. Uh, he, he was asking if um, Cisco will inform client when there's a compromised security detected. Sure, sure. Yeah. So a couple of things. So the short answer is yes, but it depends on what kind of security breach, right? So we have various services that we offer to our customers depending on, uh, and various uh, advanced services that we offer to our customers as well, where they can go and we can do a run a scan on their network and tell them of potential vulnerabilities. The second part is the automated part. So the automated part is, let's say uh, there was something malicious found in your network. So the AMP for endpoint is able to detect that. You know, we are able to sandbox it. We are able to send you an email that, you know, this was the alert, this was what we cleared, that's automated. And the third part is, let's say that you didn't even have anything in your network, right? But we detected something out there in, let's say, Serbia or Russia or Poland or some other country in the world, we detected a new malware, right? It's a new signature that we've never seen we are able to then create a solution real time and push it across all Cisco devices all over the world, right? We are able to in real time, make sure if there's any security vulnerability, if there's any new malware, signatures are updated so that if your IPS or your AMP for endpoint can detect that this new malware and make sure that you are able to be secured even though the attack on your network never happened. So again, three pronged approach. One is proactive where you have a professional services who's doing it for you. Second is like if you have a tool like AMP for endpoints, you'll get automated alerts and there's a new security threat that's found. And the third thing is that if your devices, even if they're not compromised, and if there's a new malware anywhere in the world, we are able to update our network real time. Hi, question. Uh, has it just one more question? Sure. Uh, does Cisco work with my uh, existing infrastructure or do I need to change out everything? No, it works with the existing infrastructure. So, which is very good, right? So. What we want to do is do as much plug and play as possible. So if you have your existing infrastructure and you're just looking for a collaboration solution from Cisco, you can buy Cisco WebEx, right? Which is the number one collaboration platform. Uh, if you're just looking for security for your endpoints, maybe you can just start with Umbrella or you can start with AMP for endpoints. You don't need to upgrade your or refresh your network. But let's say you also want to look at technologies like Wi-Fi 6, 5G that have been launched with the new iPhones and you want to upgrade your network. You don't have to upgrade your complete network. Let's say you have five switches. You can upgrade two switches and have Wi-Fi 6 running off of those two switches. So again, we understand nobody wants to do a complete greenfield deployment. Everything is going to be brownfield. Uh, and we, we do, do, do support various implementation methods where you can begin small and grow with us and we can join you along with your IT journey. All right, Inkte, any, any other questions? All right, uh, great. No. All right, Thanks. great. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the final building block, and that is how do you connect your remote work, right? So we've talked about collaboration. We've talked about security. The third thing is connectivity, right? So we've, we've seen essentially we have to be ready for the phase two, 
And the phase two is that we'll be going back to offices. And that means how do I prepare my network? How do I prepare my network to be ready for the office of the future? And that means upgrading your network itself. Some of the key trends that you would be hearing or listening quite often in the future, in the near future, are things like Wi-Fi 6, location-based analytics, and making sure that we have a network that is agile, a network that is application aware, and a network that's... These are some of the key industry terms that are going on right now. And the reason behind this is that traditionally, the networks have been very static. So what I mean by that is just, I used to configure a switch and then it's gonna go in a closet somewhere and I don't need to configure it for the next 20 years. And if your application is slow, maybe I just upgrade the switch to a higher bandwidth switch because I have no visibility or no clue what is happening in the application domain. And the application guys used to historically have no clue of what is going on in the networking domain. But what we are doing with an application aware network with something called as software defined, what we are able to do is that we are able to do something called as intent-based networking. With intent-based networking, we are able to allow applications to be able to form policies in real time. So let's say I have some database traffic, some Oracle traffic. Can somebody go on mute? I think I'm still getting some background noise every now and then. Anything? All right, thanks. So I just wanna make sure, um, I think it's just a bad uh, audio line, but. Uh, let me regroup my thoughts. So with intent-based networking, we are making our network not static, but dynamic. And the second biggest trend that you're gonna see is that everybody's talking about 5G. I think you would have heard about 5G coming with the new iPhone 12. A uh, lot of countries have started talking about 5G, but one technology that we often overlook is something called as Wi-Fi 6. It gives you all the benefits of 5G in terms of throughput, in terms of density, but unlike 5G is here today, it is multi gigabit throughput with your existing network. And that means that my network needs to be upgraded. It means I have access points that are multi gigabit in throughput. I have location based analytics. I have security with MX. I have switches that with security inbuilt. And then I have a monitoring and management tool, which is cloud based. So Cisco Meraki is our cloud based portfolio where you have a cloud managed system with Meraki Intersight, you are able to get complete visibility of what's happening inside your network. And you have one physical on-prem device that talks to the cloud from which it is managed, monitored, and configured. And from a teleworker solution standpoint, again, what are we looking at? We are looking at how do I securely connect my remote workers? And while it can require public internet, we want to make sure that that public internet has some kind of VPN encryption that is going on because we wanna make sure that your network traffic is secure. We wanna be able to allow mobile employees. We wanna be able to allow mobile remote teleworkers. How can I take an access point and be able to expand your company's network to your homes and without having a VPN connectivity? So we have many solutions that are available to our customers. With Cisco Meraki, you have a cloud managed space. We also have a complete catalyst portfolio for customers that need more customization. So based on your use cases and your requirement, our message is very simple. We wanna simplify IT and we wanna give you a complete cloud managed ID solution with a complete visibility of what is happening inside your network. Again, essential as you move into phase two that we look into what is going on in the network piece as well. And finally, that brings me to my key takeaways. And if there's one thing that I want you to remember from this presentation is that we all downloaded many freewares off of the internet to get our video conferencing up and running. We, you know, we probably using public email to send our office files. We maybe are even using WhatsApp in certain cases to be able to messaging each other. It is not secure. So in my, in your current service, have you asked yourself a question? Is your work from home service secure? And then how are you communicating inside your office to your teams? And how are you communicating with your customers? Do you have the platform for that? And are you able to provision and monitor your network remotely, automated, zero touch provisioning? Are you securing your remote access? And are you ready to reopen your offices safely? And those are the questions that if you don't know the answer to, feel free to reach out to us. But once you start double clicking on some of these questions and you start looking at, yes, I need seat belts in my car, I do need security, I need network security. When you look at, no, it's not safe to just think that, hey, I'm not getting any pop-up messages on my laptop, doesn't mean that I have no malware. 
I guarantee you, you download something from the internet today, there's bound to be malware somewhere. If not with you, some of your colleagues may have it, they may mail it to you. And it's not like somebody is deliberately trying to infect your PC or your laptop, but it's just that it's the reality of the life we live in. Hackers do take advantage of these vulnerabilities and they hit us when we least expect it. And finally, what's next? How do we make sure that business continuity evolves into business resilience? So, A, we must respond. Social distancing, we want to make sure that we digitize and make sure we use all the digital tools to be able to use technology and bridge the resilience into our business, right? Build that. The second part is, how do we reflect? How do we plan for the next three, 12 months? It's a dynamic situation, right? So it's not like we know exactly when each country is gonna open. Somebody was telling me that we may have a bubble between Singapore and Malaysia. So maybe I can come and you know see you guys in person next time. But the whole idea is that we're gonna have a time between the complete normal that we all hope it becomes eventually in the future to where we are right now. And that transition means that A, we need to have hybrid work modes. B, again, we need to reimagine how we're going to use technology. Third part is, what is this new normal? You know, whether it's e-learning, whether it's uh, telemedicine, telework, we want to make sure that we have a strategy in place. And the fourth part being is how, do, how quickly we will rebound. And I think those businesses that adopt technology would be able to rebound more quickly uh, from GDP standpoint, from being able to outpace their customers. And for us as employees, those of us who adopt the right technologies for our personal lives, for our offices, for our employees, we would see that reflecting in our success as well. Because end of the day, uh, had this pandemic happened in any other decade than the times that we are living in right now, we would all be unemployed. So thankfully, we have technology. It is offering the right set of solutions now. It's also not just about having a piecemeal approach of downloading some software from somewhere, getting an antivirus from somewhere else, and not having an IT strategy in place. Uh, for those of you attending this session, I know that uh, you're the leaders in your business. Uh, you do uh, take security and IT strategy very seriously. And that's why it's really important that we be the guiding forces behind our organizations in helping them drive uh, a strategy around this. Because uh, without a plan, uh, there's, no, uh, there's no chance of getting there, right? So if you have a plan, plans sometimes work, sometimes they don't. But at least you have a shot of getting there. So I think that is what we wanted to cover today. Uh, and if there are any live questions, I would be happy to take them. And I want to thank you all, most importantly, for attending this session and giving us the opportunity to showcase some of the things that we are doing in this arena and how Cisco can be relevant to you as our customers and also making sure that we are truly able to make a difference, not just from a technology standpoint, but also socially, if we can help say, keep our doctors safe with some of these technologies or the first in-line workers safe, that is something that we would really love to do. Thank you very much, Asim. Um, there's a few questions from uh, the audience here today. Um, the first question is, uh, what's the advantage of Cisco for best meeting solution compared to others that are in the market? Yeah, so I think uh, that's something that we uh, clicked many times. So first, security. That's number one. Uh, if you look at some of the competition and, uh, you know, we all have Google or other search engines that you may prefer, go and look at their security track record. Uh, go and look at how many times they have been compromised, how many times their data has been breached. Some of our competitors even share your IP information with third party applications and you have to opt out. So, but Cisco is taking pride in the fact where uh, our CEO said that we want security to be like a fundamental, privacy to be a fundamental human right. Those are very powerful words. So one is security. Second part is Cisco is the only one with an ecosystem. We are the only vendor that is either number one or number two. Don't quote me, but we are always there or thereabouts in the magic Gartner quadrant when it comes to IP telephony, when it comes to contact centers, uh, when it comes to calling, uh, when it comes to video endpoints. So collaboration is not just about, hey, I got a solution that allows me to do web conferencing. Anybody can do that. We can write a program today with God knows what security in a basement and have it up and running tomorrow. That's not how it makes, uh, that's not how we want to do business. Cisco takes pride in the fact that we have a complete portfolio and architecture that allows you to do all these things. And based on different user personas, we are able to give a better experience to your uh, employees that you want to take the, uh, let's say your C-level employees where you want to take the meeting experience to a whole different level. 
The second part being that with Cisco, we are not just a collaboration company. We do the network, we do security. So some of our cloud security solutions are complementing the collaboration solutions that we bring into the market. Again, cloud-based. So I think that's the unique value proposition that we have. And again, I think it's about trust. It's about outcomes from feature parity as well. Uh, we have many first, like we have an AI assistant. So just like you have uh, Amazon Alexa, you have Apple CD. Now we have our WebEx uh, artificial intelligence assistant. So you can start your meetings going into a meeting just. And again, going back to when we want to return to offices socially distant, we want to make sure we touch as few devices as we can, wash our hands, wear a mask. So it ties into that whole story that we have a solution that's very forward looking. Okay, thanks, Asim. Um, there's a couple of more questions. I think Juan is asking if there's any offerings for our residential grid solution. Yes, we do. So, yeah. Yes. So we have uh, different offerings uh, from different teams, uh, especially given the pandemic. We've also got in some offers uh, for secure remote work, uh, especially for small and medium businesses. Uh, Again, reach out to us offline. We can uh, because this is a public platform, so we were not discussing offers or promotions per se. Uh, more for our partners because Cisco uh, interfaces via our partners to our end customers. But feel free to reach out to us offline, and we will be happy to either connect you with a partner, or if you're a partner yourself, uh, we'll be happy to update you with the latest set of offers that we have in the market. Okay, thanks, Asim. Uh, I think there's also another question I mean around around this. I think Chelsea just asked how much is our basic package. I think we will also uh, reach out to you offline. Please drop us your contact and we reach out to you. Uh, okay, so next is um, what are the skills or certifications that we need to manage all these Cisco solutions? Uh, basic skill to be able to operate a smartphone is what we require. No, that's, uh, uh, I think it depends. Uh, let, let's be honest. For a small, medium business, IT solution, most of the solutions are either set and forget, configure one time, or zero provisioning, right? Simple, secure, smart. And basic computer knowledge is all that is required. But for larger enterprises who are looking for more advanced business outcomes, they are advanced certifications. I'm a Cisco certified, uh, a CCIE, I think is the highest certification myself. And it took me two years to you know, learn all the technologies and all the things that we had to do just to get that, pass that exam. But fortunately, I think Cisco, like many other companies has understood that we need to simplify the configuration part. We need to automate these things, things like machine learning, uh, things like uh, programming and having a UI and having Android and um, Apple applications that allow you to configure your network in a few simple click. That's the roadmap, that's where we are going. If you're a small and medium business, uh, configuration should be the least of your worries. But yes, uh, for a large enterprise with thousands of users, potentially things like software defined van, multiple locations, they do have IT teams uh, to manage and set up these things. And we work very closely with them again to make sure that their responses are as automated as they can as well. Okay, thanks, Asim. Sounds, sounds like it's not going to be difficult. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, there's another question about the security. Uh, what is the best way to protect myself from malware? Uh, so AMP for Endpoint was uh, one of the things that we mentioned is our endpoint security. So security is like a buffet. Uh, we have many things. It's not just one product that you buy and it's done. See, hackers use a lot of tools to attack you. They just don't use one tool. They use a lot of tools. So security solutions, again, there are a lot of things that we need to build onto. So AMP for Endpoint is the advanced malware protection tool that we have that basically gives you a firewall, an antivirus, and uh, IPS all in a single client. And then you are able to do some malware protection. But like I said, there are many other tools. There's Umbrella, uh, there is um, Duo for authentication. But from a malware perspective, AMP for Endpoint is the one that we'll be focused on. Okay. Uh, I think one, one last question that I have is, um, how is Wi-Fi 6 better than the previous one? Oh, yeah. And what should we upgrade? Okay, so this is a good question to end uh, this session because Wi-Fi 6 is something that I'm very excited about because I always like more bandwidth and more speed. <laughs> so a couple of things, right? So if you look at wireless today, the way it works, it's very democratic. What do I mean by that? There's an election going on, so everybody's talking about democracy. No, what I mean by that is, 
democratic in the sense that when you send a wireless packet, you are not guaranteed that you get any quality of service. You're going on a shared highway. And at any given point of time, only one client can transmit and receive data at the same time. So that's before MIMO, that's before anything else that we can do. Uh, with Wi-Fi 5, we were able to bring things like MIMO. So you could basically have four lanes on a highway or three lanes on a highway or two lanes on a highway where you could transmit and receive two packets at the same time, two devices could do that. Now with Wi-Fi 6, we are able to a highway. So you solve the problem of density. So imagine a highway with 30 lanes, 30 packets can transmit and receive the data. They can go at a higher speed, so better bandwidth, three to four times the throughput of Wi-Fi 5. So you can go multi-gigabit in terms of throughput. That's two. You have battery savings on your smartphone. That's number three. And then you can do new applications like augmented reality, virtual reality, things like telemedicine. So it is using a lot of the 5G features that are available in the 5G with within your enterprise but one good thing about wi-fi 6 is unlike 5g is backwards compatible so pretty similar price points to wi-fi 5 better throughput better density and just a better experience overall okay thank you very much asim um any last questions that we have from the floor just type it into the q a um section and we'll be able to answer them um Looks like that's it. Uh, thanks a lot, Asim. I think I uh, want to pass it over back to Susian. All right, thank you all. Thank you, Asim, for the insightful sharing and for being so patient in taking these questions from the attendees. I believe we have all, we are now all better we better understand uh, what is Cisco all about. Um, also, thank you, Yin Ting, who is also from Cisco, for posting the questions to Asim. Not forgetting, um, thank you, Cisco, for making this happen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are almost coming to an end, and we hope that you have enjoyed and benefited from this session. There's always something to learn, regardless of who we are, where we are, and what we do. And so we have one final request from you um, to help us to do continue to do what we do best to provide you with events and knowledge like this to empower you. Um, please let us know your feedback. For those of you on YouTube and Facebook, you may scan the QR code um, to leave your feedback. And those on WebEx, the survey will pop up on your screen after you leave. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Star Media Group, we would like to thank each one of you for being with us here throughout the session. We will stay on this session for the next 10 minutes or so before we leave. Once again, thank you, and we hope to host you again in our next Star Media Group event. Ladies and gentlemen, stay safe, stay disruptive. Have a good night, rest.